Hi there and welcome to my very first YouTube video. My name is Rogier and I'm pretty active on Instagram but this is my very first video um, and I'm going to do this because many people ask me to do it and I think YouTube is also a very interesting channel to reach people. Um, so here it goes. I work at the Botanical Garden of Leiden, that's where I am right now. Um, here I'm mostly interested in orchids because orchids are fantastic i will show you later but today i'm going to talk about stefania because they just look very pretty today i brought some species together and i'm going to introduce you to all of them here for example we have stefania recta which is the most commonly grown species this is because it's also the cheapest one i think in thailand this species is the most collected or cultivated species therefore it's um, sent to Europe and America uh, in high numbers and it, it's a little bit more affordable than the other species. The name Recta comes from that it should grow up but it's a quite a variable species and therefore this species grows down which I quite liked. Also the leaves were larger than normal for this species and therefore I like this clone. This is a thing with Stefania which I can only recommend. Many people like to buy them as a caudex, as the tuber from which they grow. This is a cheaper and interesting way to do it. Um, however, it also has some risks because not every tuber will grow. Some will get damaged, some will get too cold, some are just dead even at the moment you buy them. And the second thing is, is that because they are variable, it can happen that the clone that will come out is not necessarily a pretty one, or at least one that you like, because this species has several forms um, of which, uh, especially the ones with a pink rim around the leaf and a yellow rim around the leaf, are very pretty. And for, for you to get them is just to see them in leaf. So go to a nursery or if you buy them online, make sure that the person you buy it from can make a picture of the plant that you get. The next one I'm going to show you is this one. This is Stefania suberosa and it's named after the cork-like caudex. It's pretty similar to some Dioscorea species, which have the same structure, but it's of course not related. They are from a different family. This species is usually a climber, as you can see, so it needs some support to do that. But this plant I also bought as Stefania suberosa, and it has these weird blue leaves and a very short stem. So therefore, I think this actually might be something else. I'm not sure yet because this plant has never flowered for me, even though this one is very like generously producing flowers. When you talk about the flowers with Stefania, you come to another subject, which is that they are dioecious. And dioecious means that they are either male or female. This plant is a male plant, and therefore it produces flowers which only produce pollen. The female plants will produce flowers which have sticky stigma. And if you put the pollen of one plant on the sticky stigma of the female plant, you will get seeds, which is very fun to do. And actually the only way to reproduce Stefania. The next one I'm going to tell you about is undoubtedly the queen of Stefania. This is Stefania Kawesaki, also known as Stefania Nova. The name Nova means new and this plant was actually in cultivation before it got a proper name and therefore it was traded as Nova. But Nova is not the name, it's just a trade name for this uh, species, not a botanical name. So the proper name is Stefania Kawesaki, and now it has that name, we can actually forget about the name Nova. This is also one of the rarest species of Stefania, and it's also very expensive. I, d I have no idea how much these are. Uh, most of my Stefanias were actually given to me uh, for a project I'm doing to pollinate them. Um, but these can run into the hundreds of euros or dollars. This is not weird because this plant is actually rare and therefore we come to the next subject with Stefania. That's that many of the plants are poached in nature. Um, the caudexes are very valuable and we prefer to like large specimens, but these large specimens are old. And so old that you cannot grow them in the field for the money that we want to pay for them. So they go to the forest, they go to the mountains where they grow and they, co they collect them in the wild. This is of course not a good thing. Of course, every plant originally has to come from nature, but when we can multiply it in cultivation, we have to do it. It's our responsibility as plant lovers. 
Now I'm not sure if the people that sell these plants will do it because for them it's easier money to get them straight from the wild. But we as plant people, as plant collectors and as plant daddies and mummies and whatever you want to call yourself, we can do that. With aeroids you can simply make cuttings, which is every, very easy and therefore there is a big trade on the internet of people sharing cuttings. With Stefania, as I said, it's difficult, you cannot make cuttings, but you can make seeds. So this is what I did with most species that you see here, but in this case with the Stefania Kawasaki. This is a female plant and I pollinated the female flowers and here you can see the seeds coming. At this moment I'm pretty unsure what to do next because I've never sown Stefania myself, but judging from the place where they occur, they probably like a very humid and warm summer and I think if I will supply the seeds with that they will probably grow. And I'm pretty curious to see how long it will take for these caudexes to grow to the size that we sell. Is a caudex this size? Is it just one or two years old? Or will it take 10 years? If it's 10 years, it's pretty bad that you take it from nature, I think. Now you've seen several species. I will tell something about the cultivation. Luckily, the cultivation is pretty similar. These are plants from a mousson climate, which means that they have a dryish winter. Very often it's not too cold, still, for example, room temperature, but the summer is very warm and very wet. It's constantly raining almost every day in some areas. This means that as soon as the plant has leaves, you shouldn't let the soil dry out, because these leaves are soft, they evaporate a lot of water. Uh, the Kawasaki, for example, makes the largest leaves when you give it a lot of humidity. So you can place this actually in a terrarium until the leaves are fully formed and hardened off. And then you can place it back on your windowsill. The leaves will be pretty much bigger than when you grow it fully on your windowsill. When they are growing, also give them a little bit of fertilizer. Just any random houseplant fertilizer will do, but because they have this caudex as a tuber, they like a, a fertilizer which has a little bit more potassium inside. So if you give that, it's usually a fertilizer for tuberous vegetables or tuberous uh, plants like flower bulbs, um, well, anything that has tubers basically. If you give that to them, they will love you for it because they can grow a bigger caudex because of that. As soon as the leaves go yellow again, it starts to give them their rest back. And then keep them quite dry, water them very sparingly or not at all. Just keep a, keep a look out on the, the caudex if it's not drying out too much. And just leave it like that until it's spring. And then the best thing to bring them back to life is to really wake them up. Place the tuber in a warm, humid spot so that it can feel that the summer is coming again. And this is usually the best way to get the little sprouts starting again. And as soon as it does that, water it again fertilize it again, and then enjoy the plant in the summer until it goes dormant. In some cases, your plant will not go dormant. Some species do this. You can let it grow, but I have to say that the plant doesn't become much prettier if you do that. What you can then do is then in spring, just cut the whole stem off and force it to make a new branch. This will make your plant a lot prettier. It will not love you for it because it already had a big growth but it will just make your plant prettier and more compact. Well, it leaves me to say nothing else than um, thank you for watching. I hope you will appreciate Stefania a little bit more and maybe can also join the project in reproducing these species and sharing them with other people. Uh, and also, I'm pretty curious what you think about my video. Is there anything that you like to change? Um, better sound quality, I'm going to get a microphone. Uh, but maybe something else that you think that can be better. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope to see you next time. Thank you for watching.